Okay. So you, when, when people give you money, you, you are the one responsible for making sure it's secure, safe, and they're going to get the return they're promised. Who are these people? What kinds of people do you manage money for? People and institutions. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's right, and it's a really good point, Stefan. So we we well recognised, I think, as having the most diversified funding base in our mm. sector, and 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 what we do is we apply the same asset selection disciplines across our entire book. So you know, really, our focus, whoever the investor is, we want to be we, we want to be an excellent steward of their investment capital. So when we think about who these investors are, well, we manage three point six billion in investment funds under institutional mandates. So that's mm-hmm. three of the big four banks, two regional banks, three household name global banks. All of these have been excellent long term supporters and investors yep. in the business, in some case for many decades. Our credit fund, well, that's what most of your investors will be familiar with. That holds about five billion in assets under management. We manage funds there for well, for a variety of investors, for fund managers, family offices, high net worth inv- in individuals, right through to everyday, if you like, mum and dad investors. We manage uh, for global institutional investors. So I'm thinking here of pension funds, uh, sovereign wealth funds, fixed income managers through our capital markets program. So we have $4.4 billion outstanding in residential mortgage-backed securities. We've attracted a bit of attention in that sector um, because we've recently settled the largest securitization transaction globally. So that's $1.25 billion since the coronavirus began. And that's on the back of, of, of the really strong interest that these institutional investors have in our loans as safe harbour assets, if you like, in times of market volatility. Okay, so we so like having a very different. Yeah, so it's so it three. There's so, sort of three different types of three people, key buckets. Three yeah. key buckets in mm. big institutions, mm. funds, mm. the everyday person, family, wealth groups, yeah. essentially. Yes, that's that's correct. And look, I say again, whoever the investors are, in in one sense, when we're approving assets, we're agnostic to all of that. Yep. Our approach is to be absolutely rigorous in our asset selection regardless of where the funds are going. Um, yep. And look, none of our investment portfolios, that were for any of those institutional investors or in the 48 hour, uh, the 90 day, the one year, the four year accounts in our credit fund, none of them have ever lost a cent of investor capital. And you know, for a manager across seven decades, that's a rare accomplishment and one that we take very seriously. Yeah, so tell me, you've got the banks that invest into a non-bank, is that right? Correct. All right. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> well, well, let's uh, chase that. that yeah, extra... I, I guess it, I, at, at first blush, it might seem so, Stefan, but, but we have a particular expertise. Mm. We special, we're a credit specialist. We yep. focus on borrowers who don't neatly fit, if you like, the, the primarily automated credit assessment processes that the big banks like to operate. And that allows them to generate scale. And that's been a really effective and efficient model for them for many, many decades. Yep. But it does mean that there are many, many cohorts of really good quality borrowers. Think of SMSF borrowers, for example, but think of the self-employed, think of borrowers who are not resident in Australia. There are a whole cohorts of borrowers who don't get good service from those mainstream banks just because you, you need to dive deeper into their credit to get an understanding of whether there are good credit prospects. So that's how we differentiate ourselves and that's why we get such terrific support from, from the banks, as you say. Yep. Yeah, and look, I don't want to say that I'm a good lender, but I've I've had I've had to use the trope many times. I'm I'm self-employed, um, therefore the big yes. banks don't like me. Um, I've tried to borrow money through my self-managed super fund. Big banks wouldn't do it. The trope, hey, yes. gone. Thank you very much. But also from developing property as well, the trope have a very have built up a very a sweet spot or a niche in that market, um, which has been fant- fantastic for because over the last mm-hmm. say five years, developers have found it very difficult to get the traditional method of funding. Um, and the trobe as a non-bank has slot in there very nicely. Yeah, so 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 that's that you, you're you're articulating really well, Stefan. What we try to do in the market, which is to find those really good quality borrowers like yourself, mm-hmm. <laughs> who are who are good credit prospects, who, who from an investor's perspective present a really strong risk return profile. Yep. And by targeting those borrowers, we can deliver service to the borrowers, which is outstanding. We can we can assist borrowers and and play a role in that market but also leverage those borrowers to generate really good returns for investors. So it's a, it's, if you like, if everyone wins under that model. 